client is willing to pay more than they offered. Everybody got that. It might surprise you. Why would you put that on? Dare I say what I'm really thinking right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that our seller client is willing to take less than they listed it for. Oh, boy. Okay, so things I have seen on Facebook that should make you go, huh. what? Um, that you have multiple offers on your listing. Not on social media. Number one, we know that the seller is the one who dictates whether or not you tell the agents that there are multiple offers. Can you say it after you closed? Yes, because it's done. Okay. But what, what happens is you can negatively impact the seller and the buyer by doing it before. Yes, say that again, please. What do you want us to say and not say about multiple offers? When you take a listing, you say to the seller, Mr. Seller, it's possible that this property could have multiple offers on it. Do you want me, if that happens, do you want me to tell all the agents that there are multiple offers or none of the agents that there are multiple offers? And the seller tells you what to do. Now, many people in our business assume that we have to tell everyone. No, it's the seller's, it's at the seller's direction. And the seller, some sellers who are thinking might say, well, what should I do? And you need to be prepared for that question. And so um, <coughs> I'm going to lean on some of our experienced people in the room. God bless you. Um, to, to enhance my answer here. So, and to, in, to me, if we have multiple offers and the seller is willing to say that, that sort of builds some urgency around getting answers. So we might get answers for them, right? If, if we have a buyer or a series of buyers who have lost out over multiple offers, they may not be willing to make an offer on a property that has multiple offers. They may just say, I don't want to do this, and that might be the buyer for the property. So what would be the other reasons to tell everyone or tell no one? Somebody that's been doing this for a while, or not Trade all parties fairly, mm -hmm. whatever you tell them. Yeah. Same. What? All the same. It's all the same. Be all the same. Mm -hmm. all. Well, what and you can, the what, says, yeah, whatever the seller. The and so if you it. tell everyone, you can only tell them there are multiple offers. Mm -hmm. That's it. Nothing else. The code of ethics <coughs> says you can disclose terms. The law in Texas says only that they exist because the law says if you tell any one person any one term you have to tell all people all terms of every offer yes so what is the chance that you're going to leave something out yeah hi mm -hmm. so that's why that's just don't be saying i got multiple offers oh my gosh bring it bring it bring it just how do you feel about the question about how many offers that's, That's factual. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and also, oh, by the way, don't lie and say you do if you don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now you're spoiling all the fun. <laughs> so you're in a multiple offer situation. Everybody knows it. Say we're in multiple offers. Can you say bring your highest and best? Yes. Yes. And you can't say nod, nod, wink, wink to your buddy right here. No. Nope. So this guy is your best friend. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm He's my best friend. Uh, <laughs> hey, it, it needs to be more than asking. You get that? <laughs> <laughs> all I can tell you is there are multiple offers. That's mm -hmm. all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. all right. And if you don't want to say it's the law, you can say, do you know who my broker is? She's gonna, she's gonna shoot me if I talk. <laughs> Um, just that's all I can say about that. Um, don't post that you need a recommendation for an attorney I'm on sure. Facebook. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw that last I week. I saw that. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, 
had a gross meltdown over that, and uh, the agent's not in this office, but in another office that we um, have a close affiliation with, and uh, he got a little... Was there a lot of details mentioned? No, I needed an attorney for an earnest money dispute. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, well, there's... I um, screenshotted and text and said something really kind of like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> you called me, you gave me a turn. Don't post that on social media. And then the immediate response was, it wasn't for me, I was doing it for a friend. And, and maybe I should clarify that on Facebook and then the next text, is, text was, maybe I should take it down. <laughs> and I said, good, good second choice is a good one. If you need an attorney, don't be asking. Don't be asking for that kind of stuff on social media. It's ridiculous. If you need an attorney to help you get a divorce or, or do your tax planning or, or real estate attorney or any of those kind of things that aren't involving us maybe getting sued, ask your colleagues. Who do you know that yeah. on social media? But don't we have, some, have access to attorneys through NAR anyway? T-A-R. T-A-R. Mm -hmm. um, that you need access to a home in another area and you need to borrow their super key. Oh Someone's Lord. super key. <laughs> That's lovely. That was also on social media last week. Oh, on social media. Oh. Yeah. Well, I called it the social media. Oh. Oh. Is this on our page or a private page? No, it was just somebody oh. that I know that I'm a friend oh. with posted that on social media to which I sent a private message and said I really wouldn't be asking someone to break the law openly on social media and said aka super key request just in case you didn't know what you said don't ever say things about the condition of the property on social media like I took this listing and the roof leaks that should be some disclosure not in social media. We've also had a buyer who was a friend of the sellers and they went back through the history of the sellers postings on social media and found out that some years ago, three or four years ago, the seller had had a roof repair done because the seller had posted that and they wanted to know if the roof still leaked when they wrote an offer. So we can't control what our sellers do but in our buyers, however, I hope you'll coach them a little bit about things not to say on social media. I got three offers on my house tonight. I'm so excited. All of them were above asking price. <laughs> <coughs> After they told us not to disclose multiple offers. And we had that one happen. They told us then they did it. Uh, anything else about that? Uh, this was a sort of a fun one that the house you listed is on fire. And I said, you know, I, that really didn't happen. I just thought. <coughs> You should call the fire department and not put it on Facebook. That's the last thing. <laughs> uh, or that you need a date. Um, we've also had, those were both jokes. Um, we've also had people um, get mad at a client and, and talk ugly about them on social media to their friends. You know, and call them ugly names that we probably wouldn't want to call people anyway. Um, don't ever say any. Now we kind of got into broad general generalities, and for those of you who don't know, we do have a social media policy, and it already tells you don't say anything racist, sexist, or use profanity. And when I put that in the policy, people ask me what's pro, what's it, what's profanity, and I was like, seriously, and um, <coughs> and it was a serious question. <coughs> so those of you old enough to remember this will know what this means, and those of you, those of you not can Google this because there is a YouTube on this that we're not going to play today, but George Carlin, who was an old comedian <laughs> and pretty funny guy, had a, had a skit called The Seven, the Seven Famous Deadly Works. And uh, there are words you wouldn't want to say in front of your... Anyway, so if you don't have, you know, if you're going to watch that on YouTube, be sure that your children or grandchildren are not in the room when you're listening to it, because they will repeat all those words. Yes. Um, do your best on a... On a, on a Real estate social media site, if it's your, as an agent site, that you aren't too political. Because we do business with all sorts of uh, political parties, with all sorts of 
people with all sorts of religions, with all sorts of everything. And, and if you offend people, it can get ugly quick. I will tell you that I uh, have a friend, a broker up in the Metroplex, who, who some of you know, who's a broker. And uh, he was he's a little older than me, so he had, when he first got on Facebook, someone had invited him to join a group, and he joined it and had paid any attention to it. And it turned out that that group, whatever he had joined, which he had never looked at, never posted in, uh, was an anti-Muslim website, uh, Facebook page. And they, their office um, was engaged in a transaction where a uh, Muslim agent with a Muslim buyer did not get the deal in a multiple offer. And they brought suit against that broker saying that the reason they didn't get that contract is because the broker was anti-Muslim. And they cited this group as the reason that they were saying that. And of course, my friend had never even been there, didn't, ever, didn't know what he was doing. And so what this became a lawsuit and the broker had gone to the Trade Association, Texas Association of Realtors, for assistance in paying legal fees. And so, sort of a side note, if we were ever engaged in a lawsuit where we thought that the details of the case might set precedent, precedent across the state, we can ask TAR to just pay the legal fees. And so, I happen to currently serve on the committee that makes the decision whether we do that or not, so I'd have to read all this case and all this stuff. And, um, went immediately after that meeting to my hotel room and took myself off of every single odd group that I had joined. So I say that to you, pay attention. Because how bizarro is that to change <coughs> how that occurred? And uh, <coughs> I took myself off of everything, any kind of underground site, any kind of site that I was, I, you know, I'm pretty clean on what groups I belong to based on that. And I would be very cautious if I were you about what I have joined, what I've said yes to. There's a well in egg in there that I'm not going to eat, so I'm, if you watch me doing that, I'm not. Um, I decided not to eat it after I did. Uh, I'm sorry, don't respond to idiots. Um, I couldn't think of a better way to say that. There are people who will post things and sometimes I have a tendency to want to call them out on their stupidity. They want you to. Yeah, and, I, and we, have, we, have a couple, we have a couple of agents in Round Rock that are really historically bad about doing that because they are pretty strong in one direction or another on the political spectrum and they respond to people who are on the other side of that pretty. And I've had it twice go and sit down and say, it's not anybody here, so if I'm looking at you, I'm not thinking about you because you would know it if it were you because I've done it. And said, you just can't do that. I mean, I know how you feel. I might even agree with you. You just, you just can't do that. You can't jump into the ditch with people and stuff like this. Um, and I would also go so far as to say, I think you should not post on any of the underground sites at all. Uh, everything that I have seen or heard about them scares me to death. One of the earliest uh, broker underground uh, in Austin things that I heard was actually a uh, was a fair housing violation that someone had posted a question about, and they were basically asking if there was any way to keep a particular group of people out of the neighborhood, and they were taking a list of them. And I just wow. was like, oh, yeah, stop it. It was just. Avis, can yeah. I add to that list? Yeah, no, I've got a little bit well, more you. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Back when this social media stuff really got hot and heavy, about three or four years ago, it, it got to the point where an agent friend of mine in Killeen, before I got back into business, was, was complaining notoriously about fellow realtors. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that you don't complain or get involved in the engagement of complaining about your fellow agents mm -hmm. on Facebook. Yeah. And it's common in Killeen, so mm -hmm. just for the record. Uh, Sunday I'll sit down and tell you stories about things that have happened to me when I've been teaching and calling they're really pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> not as quite as amazing as one time in Brazos County when they told me that they didn't do bio over there. They didn't do what? Bio-representation. 
This was years ago in Brazos County, where I call the station at night. I was really tactful and said, I really didn't see the carve out in the law for Brazos County, okay? <coughs> and somebody got it. <laughs> um, okay, so I Googled after I made up my own list, I Googled things you shouldn't put on social media just so that I could add to that. And, and of course, several sites said, and I'd already heard this, don't put your full butt birth date, don't put anything about when you're out of town. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about it, people are watching you and they're prone to a burglary mm -hmm. of a habitation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's their friends. Yeah, yeah, could be their friends. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find that ch challenging. I've never been one to post very much about anything and uh, certainly wouldn't think about saying, I am looking so forward with my three week vacation. I'm not taking one anyway, but you know, just three week vacation to Italy or something. I'm not doing that, I wish I was, but I see people doing that and I'm thinking, okay, so. And then you start posting pictures, you know, at the Leaning Tower Pizza and all those other things. Now people know you're not at home. Post them when you get home. Be careful. I think the social media gets way too personal. People really don't need to know about your personal business. Okay. They're really not interested, mm -hmm. to be honest. They're not interested. Well, it, you know, there's a lot of science now about the rush of, of people liking you and of responding to you, and, and it's almost kind of like being addicted to, to something, and that, that we've kind of turned ourselves into an addicted society. And I've done that occasionally when I have posted something. I find myself going, who liked it? You know, <laughs> and then I go, oh, wait a minute, I'm not going to, you know, it's bad enough to be addicted to potato chips, not, not this too. Um, yeah, and pictures of stuff at the beach, unless you have the beach in the backyard. Um, your home address, they say your real phone number, like, I guess you could put in a fake phone number. I didn't know what that meant, just your real phone number. Why couldn't you just say your phone number? But it said real. And I, and, and I that means landline. I mean, you have to have, have a cell. <laughs> Oh, maybe so. I don't have a little money. Does anybody? Okay. I do. So I a couple of you do? Okay. I, and I, don't, I said, because in, with my generation, you wouldn't want your mother or your grandmother to know a lot of the stuff that would be on social media. And I don't know if that's relevant anymore, but just someone that you wouldn't want to know that you would talk that ugly or stupid. Don't do that. And this could just go on and on and on and on. <coughs> <laughs> Interesting how timely this is because they're having a risk management class in Congress this morning <laughs> at a committee where Mark Zuckerberg That's is right. up trying to explain what not to put on Facebook. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. No. 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 He's very, like, you know, well, the <laughs> congressional <laughs> committee having to testify. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Congress. Mark yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you would have thanked it. You would have thought it. Yeah. How was it? I didn't know that. Thank you, Tim. So. Anybody got anything else they would add to that that you've seen that was ludicrous? Yeah. <laughs> no? I've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, just the idea that people are even posting full names of their children. Oh, yeah. And it's so easy now for somebody to know your kids at the playground before you even get there. <laughs> and then the stranger, stranger danger is watered down. Yeah. And think about that with your clients, too, when you're showing problems. Yes, ma'am. Discussions about commission? Oh, yeah. I've seen that in the past on that mm -hmm. first page of that list. I know that's a really obvious one, yet it's really scary to see what. Y'all don't know about that one, right? Don't be mm -hmm. saying, well, I charge this standard blank percent and I'm play, paying out the standard blank percent, or I'm not showing well, most people's houses because they didn't pay. Some number. Yeah. Well, it's even when people are trying to talk about objections and trying to work those things out, and people are offering unique scenarios, it, it gets really hairy really fast. Okay, stay away from all that. Mm -hmm. That, that kind of kicks you up into federal law to have those kinds of discussions openly. And uh, we, we don't want, I don't really want to violate the rules of the MLS. That a darn sure you don't want to follow federal law because you go into a worse jail for that. 
I thought they were cozier. <laughs> they make it cozier. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? Can we bring up a different topic? Yep. We have five or six minutes. Yeah. Okay, a question is uh, on seller's disclosure. Mm -hmm. The owner of the home passed away. This it is going to the <coughs> sister, and they're going through probate and all that. <coughs> We're getting ready to get the house in the market. The sister's never lived there, so she doesn't have to complete this. But how do we communicate that? Sometimes people say, well, just have the new owner mark, I've never lived there, and leave it blank. Is, we, where is the title held right now? Is it held in her? It, it's in the it, sister's name. It hasn't been, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in the person that's deceased? Yes, so, yes I'm sorry. Okay. And it's in the process of probate mm -hmm. over to someone else. Mm -hmm. it's and probate will be completed before we yeah. go on. Seller so disclosure is not required okay. in that situation. There are 11 exceptions. Okay. And the property code, mm -hmm. I can send them all to you if I need to. Well, I've seen that. How do I communicate that to potential buyers when they're going to say, where is the seller's disclosure? It's not required because mm -hmm. this one is in the process of probate. <coughs> there's a box for the contract. <coughs> Not but required. they don't know that. Yeah, but you just don't because it's a process of probate. Okay. Now, I will say to you, um, even though it's not required, if the person who's in the process of probate happened to know something, yeah, they have to disclose that. And I've had attorneys tell me that it's better if they just put something on a piece of paper than to fill out the form okay. because the form implies that they thought they had to do it. And we'll approve that file either way. Okay. Quite frankly. question on that, Avis, because <clears throat> my question would be, couldn't the the, the person who's taking it over then fill out this sort of the, the generalities mm -hmm. of the seller's disclosure, but then not complete condition specific? Or does that muddy that water too much? If it's in the in the process of becoming an estate or if it's, it isn't an estate, I think it just we don't have one because it's not one. Okay. Not required by law. Okay. Is that the same way with investment property? Nope. Mm -hmm. Just property. It's not an exception. Mm -hmm. Investment property is not an exception. It's single family only. So if it's a duplex, that's not so disclosure not required. Four place so like this. Yeah. But if if a bank has taken it back in foreclosure, it's not required. But the person who buys it from the bank, and they want to sell, they have to disclose. They fill out the form. Yep. Okay, but they've never lived there. So they fill out the form. They fill out the form. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Even, right. if the, even if the investor that's selling it is selling to an investor, mm -hmm. he still has to do it. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Single so, family. So what if a transfer on deed at death, you know, the transfer on death deed? Yeah, so it went to Glenda, and Glenda's listing it for sale right now. Does she have to fill one out? I don't know the answer to that because I think the transfer on deed death has come since 5008 was written for seller disclosure. Okay. What have Do you know? Well, I was just thinking there's the box along the way that says don't know or unknown. And in that case like that, would it be sufficient to check the box unknown all the way down and somewhere on one of the lines to say uh, property obtained through transfer of debt? He's saying to take the Sellers was a form and write un all the boxes right. unknown. Or strike through it or whatever. We've all seen that happen. Gotta do what you gotta do. Until I think no is a no question. Yes, sir. Um, referring back to last week when we talked about clue report. Yep. I I mm -hmm. requested one on a property yep. as a buyer and I had my buyer request it. Yeah. And the uh, insurance company told them that the seller has to give approval to request that. Is yeah, because it's their property, mm -hmm. I guess. But you're shaking your head, no? No, because what happens is all He's buyer has the insurance business. Uh, yeah, we have insurance agency. I'm licensed. So all you have to do is call, an call tell your buyer during the option period, they'll get a quote. When they go to get a quote, all your big three companies, Farmer State, Farm All State, they will run a clue report against the property. Because you're underwriting two parts. You're underwriting the buyer based upon their loss history, theft, et cetera, liability, medical claims, all that, and the property itself mm -hmm. to include f fire zone and flood zone. So they're going to pull the clue report automatically. And Farmers does it by address immediately once it's entered into the quote system. So you can call any farmer's agent and tell them to get a quote, and they will tell you if there's a claim on it within minutes. Okay. So that's that simple. His wife runs the insurance company. It sounds like he knows a little bit about it. Just a shame. <laughs> How far would they go back? It's the history of the property. Oh, really? And then the thing is, is you have to remember, insurance companies are interested in water claims within the last three years. 
and, uh, and any liability claims uh, associated with the buyer coming in and medical claims and theft claims. So you'll get everything you need. Um, so yeah, I should do something on that. I'll share it with everybody later. Can I ask a really quick question? Unimproved property, mm -hmm. you're selling a lot in a platted subdivision mm -hmm. and you're not getting a survey. Mm -hmm. Do you want nothing? Do we want nothing checked in the survey section? Or do we want the two that says buyer is deemed to have received survey at the I thought on the unimproved property contract it did not give you a choice, no survey required? It does not. No, it does not. It's only the farm and ranch contract. Correct. Mm -hmm. And what about if you have a flat? It's not a survey. Not a survey. But what if, so here's the situation, a follow-up question to that is, what if there is a plat provided and the buyer is satisfied with that? Is that something you put in special provision, seller to provide plat? I would probably put in special provisions. No, buyer does not require a survey for you. And I would put in for yours, buyer accepts survey plat in lieu of paragraph plat, six. Right? Yes. Okay. That's why I should put the. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what I was hearing. Okay. Say that again. Buyer does not require a, sur a new survey. Okay. Because in the farm and ranch contract, that's a choice, but I, and I thought it was an unimproved, but it's not. I wish it was. Yeah. I've used it. I've had to write that in three times in the last. Yeah, month. we could maybe go back and ask for that. That would be two years before that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> And then if you're accepting, if the buyer's willing to accept a plat instead of a full-blown survey, you could say buyer accepts plat. Can you clarify survey. what a plat is compared to a survey? Okay. Mm -hmm. A survey is a Sorry, did registered you professional <laughs> engineer has gone to the property and has marked all the corners and all the improvements and put their stamp on it as an engineer and said as of this day, as of this moment, as of this time, this is what this property consists of. A plat is when a developer has the whole thing done and it sort of kind of might be true in a big picture way and they took it to the county and the city and everybody got that approved in order to develop this subdivision. Difference, huge difference. Sun City Mm -hmm. You buy in Sun City, exactly. you do not get a survey. You buy the new home, you do not get a survey, you get a flat. Yeah. So if you're the person that lists it, or the person that bought it originally from Sun City, and they say, I have a survey, unless they paid extra, mm -hmm. they are not telling mm -hmm. the truth, but they don't know they're not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. okay. They just didn't get one, because they don't, they don't provide it. Well, when builders go out to buy these lots, yeah. That's well, and you know, some of you, some of you know <coughs> the story that we have about a subdivision in Round Rock where a builder was going to build on this entire street, which I could take you to in Round Rock, uh, little houses, and uh, the the foundation contractor pulled off of the wrong iron pin, and so every slab on that street is is vile, is across the property line. And they had to go back and oh, replat yeah. that street ultimately mm -hmm. because all of the houses were shifted like three feet in one direction mm -hmm. because they pulled off the wrong iron pin and they put all the slabs down. Mm -hmm. And that, until the first one of those five or seven people resold it, it wasn't caught. And they had got a new survey and everybody went, whoa, dude, it's the whole neighborhood. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's a plat. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a plat. <laughs> that you accepted and believed was true, and it wasn't. What neighborhood was that in? Can you remember? Like in the streets? I'll think of it as soon as the meeting's over, I'm sure. <laughs> it's one of the, uh, okay. we had a joke name for it. I can't remember that one either. That one will come to me, and then I'll be able to remember the real name. Yes? Mm -hmm. and then you, didn't you have something else, Megan? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. One? Once uh, you get a mortgage, or if they finance any of this, then they will be required to possibly have a survey That's anyway. Right. So whether they do it then or they wait till after the fact, yeah. uh, because all your builders have a yeah. flat of something, yeah. and it's up to you to yeah. probably advise that it would be yeah. your right. best interest 
to serve at then or whenever they get ready to build. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Did you have something? Yes. No. I was just I mean, not best practice. They don't want to survey. Get an email saying we don't want to survey. Yep. But we may have a, a internal form that we created a while ago that says something, or we can make one if we don't. It says something like, we're telling you you want to get a survey and you're too stupid to say yes. And you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it would say, but it's yeah. why. It really likes Put it on social words. media. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we we're supposed to roll over. Do y'all take a break in between these two things? No. No. Okay, good. Which one do I, where's the tech guy? Which one do I click on first? Anybody know? Megan? Wisdom. Click on wisdom first. Or I should go to full screen. Help me. How do you do that? Megan, what do I click? Uh, top right. Top uh, right. Uh, second. Other right. Other right. Other right. <laughs> 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 there was an the X, there's like a little square at the top. Keep going. Uh, no, 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 very top. Next to the middle. There you go. Click that. Blue. No, no, no. no, no, no. It's just the blue. Pre not that top. Uh, the blue yeah. present. Oh, oh okay. yes. A star on Apple. Oh, it's not. I think everybody knows. We're fine. Yes. And you click the one, the left. Uh, the number one on the left uh, overview. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Is That'll this work. is this going to be a video? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then I can get out of the way, right? And can I assume there is sound? Right. Or can I assume anything? Yes. Get out of that box. <coughs> Click out here. There you go. Now click it. You go. I think it's not in the. It has to be under that link. File. If, you, if this is PowerPoint, wouldn't it be under File and then you go to Slideshow? Where did Tech Guy go? File. Just open the door and holler Tech Guy. See file. <laughs> you do it in Slideshow. Make me make this slideshow. Under file and slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> we may have got it. You might want to say it, make sure we have sound, which doesn't sound like it's happening. But we can read. I always wonder why somebody didn't do something about that, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> the sound is plugged in, so I don't know. The sound's here. Dave turned it on for me. So. Shall we pause it? Oh, We're waiting. I could like hum the Hawaii Five O music. So glad I got the tech guy. Hey, no pressure on I haven't used this before. So. Is it turned on on the box down at the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have a training yeah. class on the audio. Yeah. That was over. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? I liked all the little Yeah. 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 Good. The volume's on. But. Okay, so now how do I get out of this and go to the next thing? Sorry about that. Thanks for paying attention. When you're Wait a minute. You got to get me back to the beginning of the tab on the left. Tab on the left. The top left corner, up higher. My, My presentation is top, 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 top. Yeah. Just shut that thing out. X out of that. Would you just get me under the? Would you just do this and I'll stand here? Hi, Dave. Having a little bit of a techno wizard crisis. Oh, now, now I choose value. Choose value. There we go. Is that it? I have no, no idea. Play. Well, April 8th has already happened, hasn't it? Yeah. That's yeah, not that's video. Yeah, I was thinking it was, this is beyond the 8th. That's not video. Yeah, so we don't need to worry about value because we've already chosen it on April the 8th. Right? <laughs> 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 Did 
Sunday. That was Sunday. You were supposed to go to church. This is a class. Yeah. This is a class. Yeah, I think last. Last oh wait a minute. Last said, Wednesday at six thirty, mm -hmm. he oh. he's doing a once a week class at six thirty in the morning. Value yes. in the morning. Yes. In the yes. morning. Yes. This Wednesday, the next Wednesday. Yes. yes. Who's doing it at six thirty? Scott. Round table. Yes. Exactly. Yes. This one's what are you saying? I can't do that. Yeah, right. Try that. Is it something that you like? The FaceTime is. Yeah. No. No. It's like a round John Maxwell. Oh, you really come here and do that? Yes. <laughs> wow. yeah, we could open it up to business and get one to come to other people. Is this the next thing? Am I supposed to show another video that has no sound? Donna could do it. Donna could do it. Oh, no. What can Donna do? This is all talking. Make it sound. Let's don't listen to Mike Perry. That's good. Tom Perry. Tom Perry. All he says is get out there and hustle. That's basically <laughs> Mike Perry. Isn't Mike the Perry the one that said, uh, buy a house or get out of my car? Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Perry. 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 Mike no, get out of my car. <laughs> really? That was his way of training. Yeah. Well, I never actually bought into that. You want to do it? I really wanted to say it. Sure. Right. <laughs> 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 so, Donna, can you at least tell me what I'm supposed to be doing here? Go back up here. No. Just we're, we're more everything. concerned about your words anyway than that video, so go ahead and do your thing. Okay, he, wisdom, I guess that was. No, let's do this. Let's see if this is yeah. a. Okay. Is that tomorrow, tomorrow? Or is that today, today? That's tomorrow. You doing that tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow. I'll, I'll talk Snow, about that. Snowbird, talk about it. Okay. Uh, tomorrow we do, a, we do a weekly mastermind, 8.30 on Wednesdays. Tomorrow is going to be Steve Fole from Reliant Title stopping by. He pretty much wrote the book on uh, door knocking. So if anybody's interested in door knocking and learning in that at a... Uh, I'd say a high level. Stop by 8.30 a.m. That's much later than 6.30. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's much more doable for us. Yeah. For Is that here? Yes. Yeah, it's in this conference room right here. Okay. And so we set up a little round table tomorrow. I would think that we're, we might have some more people because I've, I've invited outside of our market center as well. Good okay. uh, recruiting opportunity to invite other agents in. So. The, on the on the sort of subject matter of small training, building is going really, really, really fast, and I don't think it'll be very long before we have the time that we go right on the floors yeah. and bless the building. I really don't think it's going to be long. That's right before the flooring goes down. So getting close, getting close. You go over there, take a hard hat. Yeah, he ran us out of there the yeah, other day. Don't go. <laughs> just actually don't go over there. Or go. Get in touch with Scott or I will take you after hours sometime. Um, this is a big deal and we don't have a whole lot of people set up to go to this, but this class is really an amazing, and it's not about how to sell real estate, it's not about how to necessarily make more money, it's about a achieving a place in your life where you have some balance between uh, God, family, and business. And, it, and has anybody in this room actually taken this class? Yes. So what would you have to say about it? I think it a long time. First year I went to family reunion. And? It was, it was Gary, Gary taught, taught it. it. Yeah. Gary taught it. And it was, it was a lot. It was an, it was an all-day thing like this one will be. And it's, there's a lot of stuff. And he, it's, I think everybody should go. It's amazing. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just it was life changing for me. It was life changing for you. Yeah, it really was. Um, I was still very relatively new to KW and didn't quite understand the culture. Um, hadn't quite drank the Kool Aid, so to speak. Um, and it was the last day of my first year family reunion in New Orleans. Um, I was exhausted. I had tried to shove way too inf much information into my head, and I sat down in that room, and um, I very quickly realized that this was a big deal. Um, I, I took massive pages of notes and I just started to take pictures because I couldn't quite write that fast anymore. And I went home and I soaked that in um, and it, it was hugely <coughs> impactful um, <coughs> mindset 
and um, again building on that what you focus on expands but directing your focus in a in a foundational way it was it was huge I've taken it uh, twice since um, and every time I've taken it I've taken something new away from it so it was, it was huge and it's not just about real estate. It's oh, no, about your life. Anybody, you could invite people from other companies. I took it from Dick Dillingham in the Austin Convention Center. And uh, he was doing great. It was wonderful. And then um, he set the building on fire. So we all had to exit. <laughs> you knocked this all over. I never finished it. <laughs> so, none of us got to hot class. so here's your chance <laughs> to, <laughs> to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> And Holly, have any, how many of you have ever had Holly instruct something for you? And? She's great. That's awesome. Yeah, like Holly. Mm -hmm. Holly Holly's <coughs> been done lots of things and is an amazing instructor. This this is a big deal. I think that we're asking for a thirty dollar donation to KW Cares mm -hmm. to attend because uh, we're I guess we're covering the cost for Holly and then we're just going to give the money to Cherry, so you can write your check to Kate of Cares and have a deduction. Are they still doing the one for like teenagers? I think so. I think so. You should you should teach that one. You should get a, you should get approved to teach that one. Okay, I have no idea what that means. That's a person. <laughs> he's, he's coming. <laughs> Where is, where is Quantum Leap happening? Is it happening? Georgetown Chamber, Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Where, where Bill and I talked a while ago. Who is this guy? Dan McGuam. Dan McGuam. He's with the Dare Network. That's scary. Dan McGuam Real Estate Dare Network. <coughs> And? He's a KW Meg agent out of Dallas, but when we all went up, Scott, myself, and Judy went up to Dallas, uh, he's just a big team and he, he, he just really knows how to uh, really build the big team. But so. he, he starts, for those who are new, you don't have to be in a big team to appreciate this because he goes <coughs> over the Red Book and how he was a single solo agent and kept reading it and reading it and reading it. And, and going to classes and taking it and finally started understanding uh, how to treat this as a business and how to make money at it. And now, David, what was this year? How much was his goal this year? <coughs> he hit 60 million in 2017. He's got a $100 million goal this year. Yeah, but he's made every mistake in the book. He will say that, but he's also the first one to help you. If any of you Go to that. If you email him, he will answer <coughs> you and help you as much as he can. He's a great guy. So when she talks about the Red Book, she's talking about the millionaire real estate agent. We all knew that, right? And does anybody know where this is happening? Here. here. Right here? Yeah. Or maybe down there? Oh, yeah. Or maybe down there. That's right. In our room, <coughs> wherever maybe. that might be. We don't know. Wherever that is. Address to May 23rd, that might be pushing it. And I don't know who's got that on their square. I know y'all have a pool, a, a gambling event going on about when the building will be No, no. Oh, I want in on it. Are you doing something like that? Are you talking about It doesn't look like that at all anymore. Sheetrocks up, walls are painted. Our, uh, the people are down there pulling the wires for. Um, Phone and internet for today. Yep. Is the plywood on the outside? Is that windows now, or is it's covering up windows? Yep. And and one of them's covering up a door. Yep. Okay. April the seventeenth, the ALC is meeting at ten thirty, and then there's a masterminding session after that about where do I find leads. You all know about that. It's in lieu of having this meeting on the 17th, which is next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yep. Everybody cool with that? We're not doing this next week. We're doing that. <laughs> we will still have a tour at night. Okay. And I guess that's a happy hour? Yes. That's a busy week, man. 17, 18, 19. <laughs> when did we sell real estate? So, y'all, how many of you go to that kind of stuff? Two or three of you? <laughs> 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 it's free
food and drinks. I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It yes. is. That's our weekly feeding. <laughs> so, no, that's when you get to eat. It's actually very fun. And, and it's not, you know, it's, it's just to get together. It's not to talk about anything deep. It's just get together and have your time and visit with people and get to know people. Cool. So I guess it ignites ongoing, which is build as new agent training, but anyone could attend. Mm. That's my phone. <laughs> 25 she, bucks. No, she has a pass. I have a grandchild imminent sometime in the next few days. Oh. And I nice. said to Donna, keep my phone and watch for my son's call. <laughs> Just in case it happens this morning. Mm -hmm. outside. Aww. And why do I have to know? Because I'm the grand chosen grandparent to go get the two-year-old <laughs> as soon as they go to the hospital. <laughs> That's why it's important for me to know. <laughs> Got to go get that baby. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Ignite next, next week, I guess, on the 11th is Contracts and Negotiations Part 2, and the 13th is Convert Them Better Than Anyone, and the 16th is Putting It All Together, which is a panel of top producers. That's probably going to be something good for everybody to come and listen to. Uh, the panel, I'm sorry, it was the panel's on what day? The 16th. 16th. Okay. So it's like every day next week. I have no idea what time. This week, 11th and 13th. <coughs> what time? I'll live through this tomorrow. Okay, this tomorrow. Okay. What time is the 16th? That's Monday. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's still 12 to 3. 12 to 3. Okay, and that's convert better than anyone else. A how do you that's say it? That's Daylight. your guest speaker. Daily. Cool. Y'all should come for a guest. That would might teach you something. You know, they what do they say? An expert comes from at least fifty miles away. <coughs> so if you don't believe our people, you can believe her. This one is on <coughs> basically phone duty. So she'll teach you how to convert on the phone better than anyone else. Ooh. So she is KW's top person when it comes to converting phone leads. Awesome. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that this is That's this Friday? Friday? Friday at oh, two o'clock. Here. Mm -hmm. This Friday at two o'clock. Um some of you are new may not grasp this concept, but there's a way in our internal revenue service code currently for someone to sell a property and uh, buy another property through a, an exchange process that lessens their tax obligation. It is a fairly sophisticated process and there's specific language that goes into the contract when you're doing one of these. If you ha I think everybody should come to this even if you have no intention of ever doing it. You should have a working knowledge of this. And I don't know who's teaching it. Uh, I do want you to know that there is some risk involved in this because there is no regulatory body that oversees 1031 exchangers. And there are lots of people who claim to be that. And why, why does that matter? Because when you sell the property, the proceeds go to the exchanger. And then you close on the other property, the proceeds go from the exchanger to the title company. And if the exchanger is a dishonest person, they can take all the money out of the family farm and disappear. Mm -hmm. With no one except a judge after you've been through a trial process to go after them. So you want to be sure that if you're going to participate in 1031 exchange <laughs> that you have selected someone that others know to be honorable and bonded and whatever else they have to be in order to not run away with the money from the family farm. Because people who have been damaged kind of think that maybe the real estate commission should be able to sanction or go get that person. The real estate commission has no oversight authority over that at all, period. That's how come I know about people seeing <coughs> family farm because it's happened. The guy that's going to do it called this morning and he'd like to have 10 people. Right now I have three signed up for it. So uh, is, is the guy that's teaching it, is, is he the third party? Yes, I think so. Is that who's going to be one of, one of the intermediaries? Or is that a title company? Or is it a title company? It's not a title company. No, it's it's his name is, I can't think of his name. Is he the same one that came before? And we only had two people. Yeah, I was one of them. And he's great, and yes, he is the third party. Okay. Y'all should come. 
I mean, seriously, tell Donna you're coming so that we'll get more of that. Because we, we ought to have a full house for that. Because everybody. Sounds, it sounds more a little bit more complicated, but when they break it down, it, it will be more black and white for you. And it's a really valuable tool for even clients that you may have that are considering making an investment at some point in the future. This is something, if you can provide this information, you might be able to help them make that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, so. 1031. So. <clears throat> yeah, I've in the past. done a 1031. Yeah, I yeah. So you should you should know about it. It's important for your future if you don't. Um, Just let me know if you want to talk. Oh, yeah. That's this Friday at 2 o'clock. July. 2 o'clock. Oh, 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 you're dead. dead. Okay. Yes, so it's here at Austin. 2 right after um, Ignite. Okay. Is Ignite goes to three? Ignite goes to two Does on okay. Friday. On Friday, I guess. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's twelve to two. It's twelve to two on okay, Friday. Okay, so if you're here for Ignite, you could just stay for that yeah. for another hour. <laughs> yep. Okay. Then in July, Michael Trithart is like the tech mm -hmm. zombie guru of the world of, of Keller Williams. I don't know if that was a good thing to say, but he knows a lot. Okay. Has created a whole lot of videos, done all kinds of things, and he's probably got stuff to sell as well. But he's the a wealth of knowledge about all of our technologies, and I guess he's coming in July, so y'all y'all aren't going to write that down because it's too far in the future. But just so you know, but it is on georgetentraining.com anyway. <coughs> okay, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm supposed to tell something funny. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> there should be funny things. If there's not, how realistic? How, uh, about how realistic how it is. It probably has real percent. If I hear my clients say, do you watch HGTV one more time, I'm going to be sick. He did some stuff on last oh. week. I'm a part-time oh, yeah. dog he worker. Yeah, this was last week. I think he forgot to take it off from uh, last week. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's their budget. That's their budget to buy a house, and they, they make 5000 a year. I'm on the freelance Hampshire trainer. <laughs> Talk and see this. <laughs> Two harmonicas part-time. Is this the same as last week? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Other click. Yeah, I know. I moved on the wrong side, so then I got wrong. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He explains this when put That's the really old one. It's the it's little, little egg. Tomagachi was a yeah, little, little, little thing. He kept a little thing alive. Oh, my my kids had it. That's our pawn table. He had to feed him and he had a. Oh, I got him. Tomagachi. I'll fill for another. Okay, well, that was enough of that. Um, Anybody got any new listings? Pat? Okay, over in Georgetown Crossing, right across the road from Churchill Farms, right? Mm -hmm. On uh, 1421 Newberry Street, we have a two-story, and yes, all the bedrooms are up, so it is good for anybody who wants to extend the life of their knees. <laughs> they can climb these stairs, it will do them a world of good. <laughs> That's right, and the upstairs has a fantastic big media room office it's got really cool recessed lighting it's a beautiful room and backyard is uh, landscaped it's got four blooming uh, rose bushes right now four blooming and blooming. our asking price is 245 and please do the comps and you'll see that this is price to sell thank you please. i have a listing uh, coming on wednesday east 's Ryan's crossing it's a two-story master down three bedrooms out three living but the great thing about it is it's on a cul-de-sac and it backs up to a beautiful beautiful green belt that you can open the gate and go out to the playground and hike and bike trails <coughs> and it's got the wood tile flooring and it's priced at 275 awesome. yes ma'am yep. I have a, just went on the market yesterday. It's eight acres. It's in the Georgetown East PJ, just right at 971. Um, its address is 315 County Road 152. I have all documentations from the city officials of what can and cannot be done on this property. And such things as many warehouses, uh, 
warehouse storage building. Can, can or can. Can or can. Can. All can. 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 I have everything in the documents in the MLS. Mm -hmm. So it could be an RV park. There's currently an old home on it that's built in 1940. It's four bedrooms, one and a half bath. It's old house as is. But they've already got a RV on the lot that they ran out. So there's two septics, two waters, and uh, two per nine on the property. Right. 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 I got a couple of things. I got the deal of the decade in Killeen right now. It's a three bedroom, two bath, 1,288 square feet, I believe. It's 89.9. Um, if you still want to buy in under 100,000, it's Northeast Killeen. Um, so you have to go to buyer. Let's go to Killeen. I also have 10 acres, uh, a little over 10 acres zoned R3 in Killeen. That's probably going to go up. Uh, it was platted <coughs> previously, platted, not surveyed. Um, or, and I can't find the plat that was presented to the city. Um, <coughs> you've got to go find it. But uh, it's uh, probably going to go 485. Um, what is R3 in Killeen? It is multifamily residential, so duplex, triplex, um, uh, fourplex development. Um, and then uh, I have two flag lots in Florence off of FM 2843. They're about to go up. They're 15 point something acres each. She wants to sell them combined. And uh, we're yet to set the price, but uh, I think we're going to do about 220 a lot. So See, I think we're all too late. We should have all bought a lot mm -hmm. of property in Florence a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's three. There's three homes I think up for sale right now on that. And I think they're asking a minute for it. But uh, it's, uh, they they join actually. There's two flag lots. You don't sell them together. There's an asphalt plant no. coming off of. It's there already. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Can't do anything about it. It reminds me of a recent Southwest Airlines flight. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do tell. We came down real fast and real hard onto the runway, and the pilot came on and said, Well, that wasn't my fault. It must have been the asphalt. <laughs> 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 Did he really say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's why I like to fly Southwest. You have a sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. New listing, new listing, new listing, new listing. We've got one in Round Rock. We've got two. We've got one in Round Rock uh, and one in Leander, both under 200,000. Well, both right at 200,000. One's in Chandler. Uh, no, what is that? Meadows at Chandler Creek over in Georgetown. 200,000, they fly off the shelf. I mean, active days on the market's two. Um, and then one, I can't remember what neighborhood it is, but it's across from Westwood down Hero uh, in, uh, in Leander. Same thing, 200,000 active days in the market, four. So both of them should, should fly off. So if you have buyers in that range, I'll ask. Fly quickly. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, we'll go to whoever is next. Always a treat to find out. Okay. But I got any cross improvements? Okay. Anybody got any of our needs that you can't fulfill? Yes, ma'am? I need a three bedroom inherited jokes. 